Let's talk about how to do an ATP test on a surface. The first step that we need to do is measure out a four inch by four inch square, which I have on the table here, and then we'll take our ultra snap swab to prepare for the sample. Now, as we're talking about doing an ATP test, it's very important that you follow the guidelines uh, about how to treat these swabs so that the sample you collect isn't contaminated. So we wanna make sure that there is enough pressure on the end of the swab that we get a good sample as we uh, run the swab over the surface and that the swab shaft is actually bent, showing that we have a little bit of surface pressure. Uh, we also need to make sure that we don't touch the shaft of the swab with our fingers because that would contaminate the sample and this wouldn't be an accurate reading. So let's go ahead and measure this sample. We'll take our pre-moistened swab and we'll apply pressure and let this swab go over the surface. You'll notice that I'm rotating the swab as I take the measurement. We've gone over one direction and now we'll actually go through this another direction. The goal here is to make sure that we get a thorough sample of what is in this surface area. Now, once we've collected our sample, we'll put this back into the tube. And then between thumb and forefinger, we'll snap the end of the tube. Give a couple of squeezes to make sure that the liquid goes down to the bottom. And then we'll shake this for about five or 10 seconds. Next, we'll open our luminometer and slip the ultra snap tube in here. And we'll go ahead and press OK to start the measurement. Now this takes about 15 seconds to take a reading. And again, what this is doing is it's measuring relative light units, which is something that helps us determine how much ATP is on the surface of this test area. Now that this is completed, we see that we have an RLU reading of 242. Now basically what that tells us is that this surface is dirty and needs to be cleaned uh, properly. A rule of thumb that we can use for determining what measurement in RLUs would be considered clean is the number 10. Now this is a number that the food and beverage industry uses as kind of a starting point, and they do have some variance based on the type of equipment or surface and what process is happening. But if we're looking to create a safe and clean environment for employees in offices or maybe in schools, then this a measurement of 10 would give us a great indication that the surface has been thoroughly cleaned.